So it says you're given y as a power function, write the equation of the power function and state its power and its constant of variation. So one way you could do that is you could look at and compare what is the x value, what is the y value. All right? Um, another thing that you could consider is what is the change in x and the change in y? So what do I do to get this one? To go from 1 to 2. I either add 1 or I multiply by 2. But what do I do to get from 2 to 4? I either, I either add 2 or multiply by 2 again. What do I do to get from 4 to 6? Add 2. What do I do to get from 6 to 8? So from here to here to here, I'm adding 2. What do I do to get from here to here? Well, when I look at this, I'm kind of dividing by 4, dividing by 4, but then it gets a little goofy. All right? So a lot of our regular, so usually when there's a power function, when we, when we do delta y, delta x, um, because you're taking a number and raising it a certain power, or you're changing the power, and you're, there's a pattern that emerges, and it's very clear. This one's kind of difficult, and the reason that it's difficult is because we're not, the incremental, the, the delta x changes, because to go from here to here, you're adding one. So it's a little more complicated than just multiplying or adding. What I would do is I would kind of do the guess and check method. What is 1 squared? In other words, I would say y is equal to, if I chose c as my answer, well, let's assume that we choose a. a is a positive 16, okay? So if I chose A, and I said Y is equal to 16 over X squared, would that work? Well, no, because this will always be a positive answer. And see, I have negative y's, so that won't work. So a can't be it, right? Does that make sense? So we'll just cross a off the list. Now let's do another one. B, I have y equals negative 16 over x. Plug in a number and check. If I choose x to be 1, well, does y equal negative 16? Yeah, this works. Let's pick another number. If I say y is equal to negative 16 over 4, does that work when I plug in 4 for x? No. So that's wrong. Now we know the answer is c, but I want to show you something. This is helpful. And some of you guys are going to be taking the ECT this weekend. Um, if you do this quickly, it, it uh, goes by quickly. It's definitely not y equals negative 16, because if I say y equals negative 16x, and I do something like y equals negative 16 times 2, right? if I let x equal 2, I don't get negative 4. So just by the process of elimination, I could get C. Does that make sense? Now the problem with this is that if we plug this in the calculator, if I go through and I plug it in L1, L2, and then I go, oh, it's a power regression, right? So it's a power function. Um, and I go to stats, and I go to calculate, and I go to power regression, and I hit that, and I try to calculate that, it doesn't like it. And the reason that it doesn't like it is because we're technically we have x raised to the power of negative 2. 
And so the calculator doesn't like that negative 2 exponent. Does that make sense? So if you were to take, so let's assume you're taking an ACT test. And you go, oh, I'll just do the power regression. And then you get an error. And you don't have time to troubleshoot the error on your calculator. You could just plug and chug the other three options and figure out what the right answer is. Truthfully, there's a little more tedious method, but I haven't taught you the longer method to actually figure out exactly what that is. Um, but I think the point of this question is, is that we can do power regressions on our calculators for most functions, except when? When the power is negative, okay? Right, and we learned that when we did our graphing, right? We can 